A man was arrested with a pound of bacon, excuse me, a pound of cocaine, which was on top of bacon. A mother finds a child sex doll modeled on her eight-year-old daughter for sale on Amazon. A man explains why he sent his 11-year-old to school in a Hooters mask. And a woman named Lovely Butts is accused of pouring bleach on a child. These are the weird stories for Friday, and they all have one thing in common, my friend. They're all from the great state of Florida. You know the one. <laughs> Bottom of the uh, East Coast. Yeah, the one that's got a swamp and some swamp people and some, I don't know, just degenerates from top to bottom. I'd imagine none of them wearing masks these days. What do you do with such a state? I don't know. You make fun of it, like on a show, like Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian, the only daily weird news podcast that does Florida Friday. I'm Jonesy, your host. Let's get into it. Those bizarre stories you hear about all the time that seem to only happen here in Florida. I know, right? Can't make this stuff up. It is just one of the many wacky news stories out of Florida. And why does the Sunshine State consistently produce such strange news? But what accounts for all this bizarre news? Is it the weather? Is it the people? Florida is full of the crazy stories. A Florida man was arrested with a pound of cocaine. And some of that cocaine was kept on a stack of bacon. <laughs> Port St. Lucie. A Florida man was arrested after the deputies found more than a pound of cocaine in his truck and even more at his home, including some on top of a stack of bacon. Oh, yeah, well, maybe his dealer is also his butcher. You know, he he rolls up with his little ticket. Eh, Number 14, yeah, hey, Larry, give me a, uh, I want a half a pound of the honey ham right there. I'd like two pounds of the ground turkey and give me a pound of Coke. <laughs> no problem. Oh, in other words, the usual? Who's this guy's name? Well, the sheriff's office say Clifford Eugene Tyndale. No, Clifford Eugene, he doesn't have the name of somebody who'd have a pound of cocaine on top of bacon. Clifford Eugene was pulled over at 7 p.m. Deputies found a bag filled with nearly a pound of cocaine. That's a lot of cocaine in the back seat. Deputies found more cocaine during a search of his house at 9 p.m. Some cocaine was found, quote, directly on top of a stack of bacon, investigators said, <laughs> which must have been a strange find for the investigators. Hey, I got more coke over here, Larry. Where, where is it? Where, is it hidden in a safe in a drawer? Where, it was, it, no, it's on top of the bacon. Very strange. Very strange. I'm going to search the bratwurst while I'm at it. Maybe he puts coke on the bratwurst. This guy just likes to put coke on his uh, deli meats, apparently. Maybe he was flavoring the bacon with coke, I'm thinking. You know how they have, like, apple smoked bacon? Maybe they got the cocaine bacon. And, I, you know, I've never had it. It's going to be some expensive bacon. Maybe it's amazing. It's that little, give you that little pick-me-up with your bacon, which is good. Maybe he's making... A BLC. You guys know the famous sandwich called the BLC, the bacon, lettuce, and cocaine? That's a good one. <laughs> On wheat. <laughs> a Florida mother finds a child sex doll modeled on her eight-year-old daughter for sale on Amazon. Oh, my God. How? How? I didn't even know Amazon sold sex dolls, A. I didn't know child sex dolls were available. This is creepy. The mother's name is Terry. She said she was horrified last month when she came across pictures of an advertisement for a child sex doll that exactly resembled her eight-year-old daughter, Cat. Oh, my. What a terrible day that is when you imagine, like, people all over the world ordering a sex doll that looks like your daughter. I don't know how I would even wrap my head around that. Terry was alerted to this sex doll from a friend uh, who let her know that this doll was available and the, sent her the link. It was selling for five fifty nine on Amazon with countless glowing reviews from various perverts. Oh, Terry, don't tell me you read the reviews of the sex doll that was modeled after your daughter. That is the last thing you want to do. That's a nightmare, right? Terry said, quote, I couldn't imagine that some sicko would use my daughter's photo to create something so ugly and evil to be used for abuse by pedophiles. Well, you know, you are in Florida, Terry, so... Um, like, lower the bar of morality. Um, this is what you got over there. Apparently, child sex dolls are legal to import into the United States, legal to possess, and even to sell in the U.S. My goodness, I had no idea. There were a number of disturbing customer reviews for the item on Amazon, including one that was posted saying, Good item during these COVID times. Wow. I hope she didn't read that. 
Amazon has since uh, removed the item. I'm wondering if they removed all of the child sex dolls. I would hope that they did. I can't believe you could buy one on Amazon. Wow, when they say Amazon sells everything, they do mean everything. The mother, Terry, has not stopped. She's teamed up with the Child Rescue Coalition of Boca Raton and lobbying for a federal law banning the sale and purchasing of child sex dolls. Terry also claims she would like to see a new federal law that charges the buyers of child sex dolls as sex offenders. Um, How do you guys feel about that? Call the show, 646-450-2012. A Florida fifth grader was asked to remove his Hooters-themed mask. Florida man Steve Gobla is speaking out about a school's decision to make his 11-year-old Ian remove and replace his Hooters coronavirus mask, telling the local media that he's only ever viewed the establishment as as a restaurant, so what's the big deal? Ian Golba, the son, was sent to the principal's office earlier this week and forced to remove this Hooters mask. It was an orange face covering emblazoned with the Hooters logo. He was ordered to replace it with another mask because it was deemed offensive. This happened although the son had already been wearing the mask to school for about four weeks. The father sent Ian back to school with the mask the next day and was again asked to remove it. When interviewed by the local media, the father said, You know, the principal told me that it was deemed offensive and I don't understand it. Okay, I told him, I told him, I said, I do not understand how that is offensive. I don't understand it. The father said that his son was afraid that he was going to get reprimanded and in trouble and perhaps suspended even from school. And he also added that, you know, we've never viewed it as anything but a restaurant, this Hooters. Well, as you guys know, Hooters is not so much known as a restaurant, but known for their scantily clad servers who are encouraged to flirt with the customers. <laughs> That's what the article says. Uh, I mean, do we feel that a woman's body is offensive? I don't know. I, I, I don't, says the father. Why it's inappropriate? I don't know. It's not. There's nothing wrong with the mask. What's, what's the best part about going to Hooters? Why do you take your family there, huh? We like the chicken wings. We go. They have the best chicken wings, you know? I'm all about the chicken wings. I don't know about this other stuff. You know, I just bought my son a mask. We like the wings. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I get it. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's not a big deal, Hooters, okay, first of all. And what, the fact that people are uncomfortable with the Hooters logo. I mean, really, grow up. Like, Have you forgotten that this is the state of Florida, okay? We should just be happy that anybody's wearing a mask, <laughs> you know? Anybody. You kids want to wear a Hooters mask? Knock yourself out. Shit, you want to wear a mask that says uh, short people got no reason to live, you know, which is offensive to me? Go right ahead. I'm just happy that you're wearing a damn mask in the state of Florida. I want more masks. I don't care if they say white people suck. Whatever you want to put on there, I don't care. Now, I don't want to see swastikas, okay? Maybe we can draw the line at swastikas. I'd, I'd rather see you without a mask than a mask covered in swastikas, to be honest with you. Super offensive. But I'm just pleased that the kid had a mask on. Give him some wings. Yay! You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A Florida woman named Lovely Butts accused of pouring bleach on a child. Daytona Beach, a Florida woman named Lovely Butts, which sounds like a lovely name. Lovely Butts, you'd imagine she does great things for the community, right? You know if you run into Lovely Butts, you're going to have a wonderful time, right? When you see Lovely Butts, all smiles all day. Lovely Butts is here. Yay, here she comes. Hey, who's coming to the party? Lovely Butts. Well, it's going to be a lovely party, is it? Well, no, because Lovely Butts likes to throw bleach on children's faces, apparently. She threw bleach on a child, threatened to hit her with a gun. (laughs) Lovely Butts carries guns. Who'd have thought Lovely Butts carries bleach and guns? I would never expect that from someone named Lovely Butts. And I'm sure she's got a great butt, by the way. I don't know. There's no photo. This all happened, the bleach and the gun incident, with a child during an argument. And uh, I'm wondering why Lovely Butts would even argue with a child. Why? 
Police said that Butts called them at 8 p.m. They arrived at the scene to find the victim outside the home covered in bleach. That's the child, I assume. The little girl said she and Butts got into an argument about the location of Butts' medication. So Lovely Butts poured bleach on her. Oh, did you touch Lovely Butts' medication? Well, you deserve the bleach. No, you don't. Lovely Butts is terrible and needs to really relax. But I don't know what Lovely Butts' medication is all about. Lovely Butts, <laughs> Lovely Butts poured bleach on the lady, the girl, causing the chemical to go into the victim's mouth and eyes, causing her to almost lose consciousness. Records show. Oh, boy. Lovely Butts has got some records for sure. You know, sometimes, you know, criminals and they have terrible names that they were given as a child. And you're like, oh, they were totally made fun of. They have a terrible name. You know, like eh, they have a last name like Crack or whatever. This this girl was blessed with a great name. And yet it still went all it went to shit. I, I mean, you can't win. Just name your child John Mary and call it a day. The victim said at some point during the incident, she was locked outside of the house. And when she tried to go back inside, Lovely Butts had a gun in her hand, threatened a pistol whipper. Getting pistol whipped by Lovely Butts. Who'd have known? Police said the girl got scared. She grabbed her phone. She was running outside to call someone. That's when Butts made a move. Lovely Butts did what? Well, she threw a container of food at her chest. That's strange. I wonder if it was Lovely Butts' famous banana bread. You, you guys know she makes great banana bread, this Lovely Butts. The victim said she's gotten so afraid of getting in an argument with the 64-year-old Lovely Butts that she started urinating in a plastic cup so she wouldn't have to leave her room. Oh, man, that's terrible. When you're scared to leave your room because there's a lovely butts lady trying to pistol whip you. Police corroborated all this when they found the cup of pee in the victim's room and an unloaded gun in Butts' room. Records show that lovely butts was arrested on charges of child abuse with great harm and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill. She's since posted bail and bonds because people love lovely butts. They'll come and get her. Well, I bailed out Lovely Butts because I really love her butt. I bailed out Lovely Butts because she got a big old gun. Well, I bailed out Lovely Butts because she knows how to use bleach. And I bailed out Lovely Butts, hoping she got something to teach. <laughs> I couldn't. I didn't know how to fix that last one. I'm like, what rhymes with bleach in the middle of it? Yeah, guys, just doing a little improv about a lady named Lovely Butts um, who maybe... You know, maybe I'd love to interview her for Weird AF News. That'd be fun. I'd love to just interview a Floridian. Oh, I once did interview a Floridian, by the way. It's on the um, it's on the Patreon. I did a bonus episode with my friend Jay, who lived in Florida during all of his high school years. Um, and it, it's fabulous, man. He talks very candidly and honestly about uh, about Florida and going to school there, kind of growing up there, and why he thinks it's so crazy. Uh, you can you can get that on the Patreon. Patreon dot com slash Weird AF News. And for a couple bucks a month, you can support the show. Um, and if, you, if you'd if you like to check that out, it's patreon.com slash weirdafnews. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, I know you're enjoying your weekend right now, okay? So just don't have to think about supporting Jonesy at all. Just have a good time. Just make sure you're safe, social distancing, all right? Being safe with your fam and your friends, but not too many, you know? Keep it, keep it to like a tight five people maybe, six feet apart, okay? You know how to do it. <laughs> Anybody listening to me? Probably not. Uh, I got some calls to per uh, to purchase. Uh, no, to publish after this. I'm not going to purchase calls. That's weird. I'm going to publish. Do you guys remember one uh, nine hundred numbers? Like anybody? That's <laughs> that was when you purchased calls <laughs> back in the day. Oh boy. Okay. Anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to call the show six four six four five zero twenty twelve, if any of the Florida stories struck your fancy, you can email me. At funnyjones at gmail dot com. I want to thank everybody in this moment for uh, sending me Florida stories. Those of you who did, appreciate it greatly. And uh, you can follow me on the social medias in case you're uh, curious. It's at funnyjones on Twitter and Facebook, and on uh, I'm sorry, on Twitter and Instagram. It's at funnyjones on Facebook. It's comedian Jonesy. And uh, oh, I've got a website weirdafnews dot com. You can go there and join the email list and read transcripts of shows and tinker around. You can just click on the Florida section and get a bunch of Florida episodes. You know, we got we got filters for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to smoke yourself a big old fat doobie, watch a, listen to a whole day's worth of Florida stories. I know you do. I know you do. Enjoy it. Enjoy the website, okay? I, after all, I made it for you guys. You know, I made it for you guys. to make your life a little better, okay? In case you can't get enough with just the podcast five days a week, you want to get a little extra, you know, check it out, weirdafnews.com. Oh, my acid reflux. Hell, Jonesy. I think them folks in the Philippines got it right with that flights to nowhere thing. 
You know what I'm saying? Now, now hear me out. You ever get in a fight with your significant other, right? And, and you're like, I'm out of here. I'm taking off, man. I mean, you're never going to see me again. You get in your truck and you peel rubber and you, leave, you, you drive right through the fence and everything. You can go crazy as you want. She knows you're going to come back, man. She knows you always do. But if she sees you board a flight, well, it might just be a little bit tougher for her to call your bluff. Hey, Jonesy, Trucker Dave here from Hannah, Alberta, Canada. I called in before a couple times. I, I just want to let you know that we're thinking about you here out in Canada, up here in the Great White North. And uh, if the fires get too much for you and they get too close to your house, you can come stay here in uh, Alberta, Canada with me. I'm, I'm just northeast of Calgary. Two hours out in the middle of nowhere in a small town with 2,500 people. Oh, I got my own place here, a spare bedroom. You're more than welcome to come stay here. But uh, if that smoke gets too bad or if the fires get too close, you come on out here to Trucker Dave's place. You stay here and we'll uh, have some drinks. We'll get some coffees and do regular man stuff because that's what we do out here. But, uh, yeah, I'll just let you know we're thinking about you, Jonesy, and uh, we appreciate your five days a week, Weird AF News. Uh, i got a lot of friends out here that listen, and we got your back if you need it. So if you can fly here, oh, yeah, you're not allowed to cross the border, but we'll get you in somehow. We'll smuggle you. We'll smuggle you inside a, inside one of them igloo trucks. Because we live in igloos up here. But anyway, Josie, thanks a lot, bud, uh, keeping us entertained. And uh, stay safe, my friend, from the COVID, from the fires, from the everything. There's a lot going on right now. But cheers, brother, and have a good day. Hello there, weirdos. Have you heard that the Just Born Peeps Company is not going to produce peeps this year for Halloween and Christmas? Well, no need to worry. This is Sam Remus, the CEO of the Stillborn Poops Company. Yes, we're going to provide you with all of your peeps needs, but they're going to be called poops this year. And we're going to provide you with all of your marshmallow candy needs. For Halloween, we're going to have... Uh, poops, marshmallow candies, and in the rat shape, it's going to be rat droppings. They're going to be black. And if you want green color, we're going to have Frankenstein droppings. For the uh, traditionalist, we're going to have the scarecrow droppings, which will contain candy corn in the marshmallows. Then for Christmas, we're going to have your traditional Santa droppings which will be colored brown. After eating all that nuts, cookies, and milk, he's going to have to go. So remember the Santa droppings in the color of brown. Of course, you all know reindeer droppings. Those will be coming out this year as well. There will be candy color droppings in the, shape, in the color of red and white stripes. Those will be called candy cane droppings. And, of course, the traditional black ones will be called lumps of coal. So fear not that the Just Born Company will not be providing peeps this year. The Sam Remus Company will be providing poops instead for all of your peeps type needs. Once again, poops available at Halloween and Christmas. That's right, poops for all of your marshmallow candy needs. 